Well, it is an extraordinary proposal, which is potentially uh, ground shifting, that it lay lays out a roadmap to not just to peace, but to the reconstruction of the Gaza Strip as well. Uh, odd, too, that it should have come from the White House rather than from inside Israel. But, you know, in phase one, phase two, phase three, in phase one, uh, there will be a six week, approximately six week ceasefire. It can be extended. In that period, hostages will be released. In the, the first phase, that means uh, the sick, the elderly and women. Uh, in return for the release of the hostages, a certain number of Palestinian prisoners will be released from uh, Israeli jails. Uh, the Israeli army will withdraw from the Gaza Strip, uh, at least from populated areas of the Gaza Strip. People inside the Gaza Strip will be allowed to return to their homes, and as many as 600 trucks uh, of aid will be allowed into the Gaza Strip every day. That is the bare bones of what's being proposed in the first, in the first phase. Uh, once they get past that, uh, if they get past that, they're into stopping the war altogether and the complete withdrawal of Isra Israeli troops from the Gaza Strip. And Rob, Hamas is making positive noises. Talk to us a little bit about the reaction so far and also the significance of this announcement having been made by the US and not Israel. Well, on the, on the last point, it's not entirely clear at this, at this point because we haven't had a reaction uh, a clear reaction from the Prime Minister's office in Israel, from Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, it's the Sabbath here in Israel, and the opposition hasn't come out with any strong statements one way or the other yet either. Uh, but there are a number of potential pitfalls here, problems here. One of them, of course, is what happens once they get past phase one, and they're moving to phase two, uh, what happens to Hamas? What is Hamas's role going to be in the future in Gaza? Because Israel has made it absolutely categorically clear that the aim of its operation in Gaza is to destroy Hamas and make sure that it's in no position in the future to play either a military or a governmental role in the Gaza Strip. That's clearly not something that Hamas is going to be prepared to sign on to. But, you know, how do they get, in other words, from phase one to phase two? It's going to be very difficult. And what is Benjamin Netanyahu's room for manoeuvre, given the fact that the right wing, the religious right wing in his own government, has also made categorically clear that unless Hamas is defeated, unless completely defeated, uprooted, they are not going to allow Benjamin Netanyahu to stop the war. If he attempts to stop the war, they will withdraw from the government, they say. So there are some really major obstacles, obstacles to get around. But there's no doubt, to go to the, the last point you were making about why the message came from Washington, this is putting as much pressure on Benjamin Netanyahu as possible. He, that, but Joe Biden was telling him, look, now is the time to take a step back. Stop pursuing this goal of a, uh, a, an indef undefinable victory. You know, Hamas is effectively defeated, it, he's saying. Now is the moment to grasp this and go forward for a future that's better for Israel, better for the Palestinians, better for the entire region.